Hey everyone, and welcome to another one of my weekly art videos. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world, and thanks so much for joining me on this one. Today, I am sharing a beginner-friendly watercolor tutorial in which I'm taking you through my painting process for this flower bouquet. This is a loose painting that we're going to be creating with one single layer, and I have chosen a color palette that is summer inspired. I have included five different flowers in this bouquet. Roses, cone flowers, lavender, tulips, and wildflowers. Some time ago, I shared another watercolor tutorial in which I take you through how to practice most of these flowers individually in isolation alongside some leaves. So I would highly recommend, especially if you're just getting started with watercolor, go through that tutorial first because it's gonna be so much easier for you to paint the full bouquet if you've already practiced each flower individually. You're gonna enjoy the process so much more and you'll likely arrive at much better results. So I'll make sure to link to that tutorial down below in the description box. All right, without much further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. A couple of things before getting started with the painting process. Here are the three paint brushes that I'm gonna be bringing in. These are all round brushes and their sizes are 14, 10, and three. As long as you have round brushes that are approximately this size and they come to a nice fine tip, you'll do great. And next, I wanna share with you the specific colors that I'm gonna be bringing into this painting process. This way, you can see what each of these looks like, as well as the main color mixers that I'm gonna be using, and you can choose whichever paint colors you have available, which are most similar to mine, or you can decide to change any of my colors for others that you like more. So starting with this first one, this is Alizarin Crimson, which is a cool red. I'm gonna be using Alizarin Crimson with a teeny tiny bit of Antwerp Blue in it to create a little bit of a more wineish color for my roses. But I'm also going to be using the same combination of colors, my Alizarin Crimson and my Antwerp Blue, to create my purple for my lavender flowers. Only that color mixture that I use for the lavender flowers is gonna have a lot more Antwerp Blue in it so that it looks more like purple. I'm also going to be bringing in New Gamboge, which is a warm yellow. And I'm gonna be mixing together New Gamboge and some Alizarin Crimson to create a little bit more of an orangey kind of peachy color for my tulips. This is Antwerp Blue right here that I'm gonna be swatching out. And I'm gonna be using this Antwerp Blue on its own for my wildflowers. But as I said, I'm also going to be repeating this Antwerp Blue in the purple that I'm gonna be using for the lavender. By repeating colors throughout the bouquet, I'm gonna be able to arrive at more cohesive, harmonious results. This brown that I'm creating right now is a mixture of burnt sienna and a little bit of Payne's gray. This is for those centers of those cone flowers. And finally, on this other side of my mixing palette, I'm gonna be preparing a couple of different greens for my stems and my leaves. The base green that I'm gonna be using is sap green. This is a warm green. And I'm also going to be creating a slightly darker version of this green by adding in a little bit of my Payne's Gray so that I can have at least a few different green values throughout my stems and leaves. And that is it. That's all I'm gonna be using for this painting. We really don't need to bring in anything else. And we can always alter the ratios of our different colors in our color mixtures to get our colors more toward the red or towards the purple or towards the orange or towards the yellow, whatever it is that you prefer. The final thing that I wanna mention before jumping in is continue paying attention to the consistencies of your color mixtures on your palettes. Make sure that you have nice juicy mixtures that have a good amount of pigment in them, but also some amount of water in them. I would say you're looking for mixtures that have approximately 50% paint, 50% water in them, more or less, because if you have too much water in them and too little paint or pigment in them, you're likely going to have very pale colors and you'll find the need to go in and do more layering to intensify your colors. 
But if you have too much paint or pigment and too little water in them, then you're not going to be able to effectively load up your paintbrush bristles and go in and paint nice and fast, which is definitely something that you want to try your best to do with this kind of painting. So as you're moving along, I would say before starting with each flower, make sure that you have enough of the color mixture or color mixtures that you're going to be using for this new flower. This way, you're going to be able to load up your paintbrush bristles with a good amount of paint and you're going to arrive at nice, bright, vivid colors with one single layer. All of this is going to lead to fresher, looser results. All right, so with all that said, let's jump in. I like starting with the largest or the most important flowers, the focal point flowers, if you will, for the bouquet on hand. And for this one, the main flowers are going to be the three roses. I not only make sure to bring in an odd number of roses instead of an even number, but I make sure to arrange these roses in my space in an asymmetrical triangular way. And that's the thing about painting bouquets or different types of flower arrangements or even wreaths. It's still a visual composition that you're painting. So you want to bring in asymmetry and variety and visual hierarchy through making sure that you're choosing a specific flower or a group of flowers that are going to be the main ones and which are going to be the secondary flowers, which are going to be the filler flowers. You also want to think about things like color harmony. This is still a visual composition. Choosing the flowers that you're going to be bringing in and visualizing the location of those flowers as well as how large they're going to be and making sure that you have larger ones and medium sized ones and smaller ones. All of this is going to help you arrive at much better results when you're creating your own flower arrangements. Okay, so I still have two more roses to paint and I'm going to explain my process for painting this flower. Using my alizarin crimson color mixture and my smallest size three round brush, I start with the innermost part of the petal area and I start by creating irregular intersecting C strokes using just the tip of my paintbrush in the very center and then pressing down a little bit more and a little bit more as I make my way out. I want to make sure that the shapes that I'm creating with my C strokes intersect or touch at certain points and that those shapes that I'm creating are not only irregular and abstract, meaning they're not super perfectly drawn out smiles or crescent moons. I press down my paintbrush to different degrees and simultaneously move it a little bit from side to side as I am creating that C stroke in order for that shape to be very irregular. And once I've created approximately four to five little teeny tiny C strokes using my smallest brush, I change on over to my size 14 round brush to continue with those irregular C strokes only now I'm going to be working on the middle ones and the outer ones, which are going to be even larger. Just like what I did with the smallest brush, I make sure to first go in with just the tip of my size 14 brush, and then I press down a little bit more and a little bit more as I make my way out still lifting my paintbrush a little tiny bit up and down as I am creating that C stroke so that my shapes can be very abstract and very irregular. It's essential in my opinion to stay loose and to allow the paint and the brush to do the talking for this kind of piece. If you're trying to overly control things or you're trying to create very specific types of shapes, things will likely end up looking kind of stiff and unnatural. You don't have to necessarily reload your paintbrush every single time you're going to be painting a new petal, but if you notice that your color is starting to look a little bit pale, Go ahead and load up your paintbrush bristles and pick up where you left off. Now, I do want these roses to look like we are seeing them from a certain kind of side view or perspective. So as you can see, as I am creating those middle and largest petals and I'm making my way out, I am creating more larger petals closer to where I am visualizing the stem of the flower to be. If we were seeing these roses from directly above them, then I would be creating a relatively equal amount of larger petals all around. But in this case, we're viewing the flower 
from the side and we want all of these flowers that we're going to be painting to look like they are part of the same arrangement coming out of the same bouquet so the perspective has to make sense it has to be consistent in all these flowers we can't paint some flowers like we're seeing them from above and other flowers like we're seeing them from the side this said i did make sure that these roses have slightly different orientations one is looking toward the left one is looking toward the right and the other one is somewhere in between this adds variety but it also makes things look more believable so i'm done painting the petal sections of my three roses the most important largest flowers that i'm going to be adding into this bouquet the next flowers that I'm going to be painting are the cone flowers. For these, I'm just going to be using my size 10 round brush. And I like starting with the central section in these flowers, which is quite raised. It's like a little dome shape. And for this, I'm going to be using the dark brown that I created by mixing together burnt sienna and a little bit of Payne's gray. I first decide what direction I want the cone flower to be looking toward. And then based on that, I create that little dome shape pointing toward that direction. And I go in with a gentle scribbling motion using just the tip of my paintbrush. I have another video where I explain about the scribbling technique, bouncing, sea strokes, and others, which I'm going to make sure to link to down below in the text section of this post. Once I have painted in that raised central section of the flower, I remove all of that brown from my paintbrush bristles and I go in with my warm orange, which is new gamboge. I very lightly touch just the tip of my paintbrush to that central section that I previously painted so that that start of that petal that is coming into contact with that central section is very thin, very narrow. And then as I make my way down and away from that central section, I press down the belly of my brush so that the petal becomes thicker and wider along the middle. And then when I end that petal, I raise my paintbrush up again to create a narrow section right at the end of the petal. So it's just a matter of touching very lightly, pressing down, and then releasing that pressure again to end the petal. Remember that all of these petals are coming out of that central section. They all need to look like they are attached to that middle dome structure. And also remember that coneflower petals are drooping down. I only added two coneflowers and I made sure that just like the roses, they are facing slightly toward different directions. And as I am painting all of these flowers, I am continuing to visualize the stems where would the stems be? Because all of these stems from all of these different flowers need to look like they're going to be bunched together at the bottom. And then it was time to add in the tulips. I'm going to be adding in these two tulips on the upper left, and I'm going to continue using my size 10 round brush. I just made sure to completely remove that previous color from my paintbrush bristles before going into this new color mixture, which is a mixture of alizarin crimson plus a tiny bit of the warm yellow that I was using before, which is the new gamboge. I'm going to be painting these very small, loose tulips together. One of them is going to be a little bit smaller than the other one because I don't want them to compete too much with the roses. I'm still using my size 10 round brush for the tulips. And the way that I like painting tulips is I get started with a very abstract irregular shape for the middle petal and then i use c strokes going off toward opposite directions for the outer petals to the left and to the right of that central petal and sometimes i add in an extra one just to make that petal section of the tulip look a little bit fuller okay so i'm going to go through my process for the tulips again getting started with the middle petal creating that irregular abstract shape there this tulip is so small that I just use one single brush stroke, but I kind of wiggled my brush in order to widen that shape a little bit in the middle, especially, and create more of an irregular abstract shape. Sometimes I do use two separate brush strokes for the middle petal. It depends on the size of the flower. But after I've created that middle petal, I just do a couple of brush strokes on either side. And these are C strokes for the petal shapes on either side. 
and then I add in an extra brush stroke for an extra petal on whichever side I feel it would look best in. I do make sure that my petal shapes are at least somewhat touching so that they can all look like they are attached to the same stem. Right, so moving on from there, it is time to add in the lavender. I would definitely consider this one more of a tertiary filler flower, a little pop of extra color and interest in this bouquet. And for this, I am using a mixture of alizarin crimson and Antwerp blue. So you saw me a moment ago create my purple color mixture and I just continued mixing in my red and my blue until I arrived at a purple that I like. And then I switched on over to my smallest size three round brush and I started painting in these lavender flowers after visualizing where I thought they would look best in. I'm gonna be adding three of these and all of these are going to be peeping out from behind flowers that I've already painted. Using my smallest brush, I make my way down from the upper tip of the flower. And I'm using a mixture of the bouncing and the scribbling techniques, which I explain in my previous video on different types of brush strokes. Lavender flowers are kind of long structures. So as I continue painting in these teeny tiny purple flowers, I make sure to continue visualizing that central stem that these little flowers are attached to. Because this is a round brush, when I press it down onto my paper, it's gonna create a kind of teardrop shape. I don't wanna create perfect teardrop shapes because that would look too patterny, but I do use that bouncing motion and gently wiggle my paintbrush to the side to create a little irregularity and imperfection throughout that teardrop shape and sometimes I paint two or even three little flowers at once. And then I also make sure to overlap these little shapes in different ways and cluster them together in different ways while always visualizing that central stem. And then finally, I'm gonna be adding in those little wildflowers. And these are also filler flowers, just to add more fullness and extra points of interest into this bouquet. For these flowers, I'm gonna switch on back to my size 10 round brush, and I'm gonna be using plain Antwerp blue. And for these small wildflowers, I am going to be using the bouncing technique again. I'm gonna use the shape that this type of brush allows, and I'm gonna press it down to my paper to create those little petal shapes. And sometimes I'm gonna be dragging the tip of my brush just a teeny tiny bit, maybe a millimeter or two, to extend that shape a little bit more or a little bit less, depending on how large I want the wildflower to be. Because I do wanna make sure that there is a variety when it comes to size or scale. So even though I do want these wildflowers to be quite small in relation to the other flowers, I do want some sort of variety between them in terms of size. You can also see how in some cases I am going in with three bouncing motions or separate strokes and in other cases I'm going in with just two and in other cases I'm going in with four. And this is to create that variety and also that sense that these little wildflowers are slightly looking off toward different directions. And I just added in a few of these in the empty sections in between the larger flowers, but always making sure that I'm visualizing the stems that they're gonna be growing out from. All right, so all of my flowers have been painted and I am now going to prepare two greens. My lighter green is plain sap green with water added in, and my darker green is a mixture of sap green and Payne's gray. And using my size three round brush, I'm gonna start painting in the stems. I start at that base of that petal section and I make my way down, making sure that only the tip of my paintbrush is coming into contact with my paper as I am creating that brush stroke so that I can get thin lines. In order to paint smooth, continuous lines, you do wanna make sure that your color mixer has a good amount of water in it because if you go in with a very thick, dry color mixture, you're likely not going to be able to create that long, smooth line with one single stroke. Your line is going to likely be broken or you're going to arrive at dry brushing effects. I do make sure to jump over the petal sections whenever I need to. And another thing that I make sure to do is to incorporate slight curves in those stems. I don't want them to look super straight or stiff. And I continue coming back to see everything as a whole, just to make sure that all these petal sections for all of these flowers are attached to a stem. 
At times I use my lighter green and other times I use my darker green. Using a couple of different green values is gonna help things look a little bit more realistic. And the last thing that I'm gonna do to finish up this piece is I'm gonna be adding some leaves. And to paint in my leaf shapes, I want a larger brush. So I'm switching on over to my size 14 round, and I'm gonna be using the two greens that I had just prepared for the stems. Sometimes I'm going in with my lighter green, and other times I'm going in with my darker green, just to have a little bit of a greater variety of green values. I'm using a very similar motion to what I was using when I was painting in the petals for the cone flowers, only I'm making my way up instead of down. I touch just the tip of the paintbrush to that stem, then I press down to create that wider middle section of the leaf. And as I make my way out and away from the central stem of the flower, I lift my brush up to create a narrow tapered shape in the end of the leaf. And finally, I switch on back to my smaller size three round brush to create a few thinner leaves coming out of some of these flowers. And I'm also going to be adding some final grasses just as a filler to make this bouquet look a little bit more full. For those grasses, I use longer tapered strokes, pressing down my brush and then releasing as I make my way out and toward the tip of that blade of grass. Less is more, I don't wanna to add too much. Did you enjoy this tutorial? I really, really hope you did. And if so, make sure to check out everything that I am offering over at my Patreon membership website, because for a very small amount a month, you're gonna get immediate access to my exclusive tutorials, classes, and resources that I don't share anywhere else. All of these exclusive tutorials include my downloadable outline sketches so that you don't have to start from scratch, reference photos, and my supply lists. There's already a library of over 75 sketching and watercolor painting tutorials that are real time, meaning they are not sped up or edited. They are fully narrated. And I take you through my entire process, making sure to explain everything as clearly as possible, step-by-step. Step. Two new exclusive full-length tutorials are added into this exclusive library every single month. For those of you who are interested in really taking your artwork to the next level and want to know all of the inside secrets that I learned about in art school and courses that I've invested in myself, there's also a full library on classes on art fundamentals in which all of the bases are covered. That library has now over 35 classes and workshops all have assignments at the end that help you actually put your knowledge to the test. And there's a brand new class or workshop added at the beginning of every single month. As if all of this weren't enough, you also get a weekly sketchbook prompt sent to your inbox to help you stay consistent with your art practice. There's a live training, workshop, or paint along session with me every single month. Members in the $15 tier and upwards get access to thorough feedback from me on their work whenever they need it, and much, much more. There are different tiers that you can join that give you access to different things, which you can choose from depending on your goals and needs needs. So go ahead and check it out. I'm going to make sure to leave a link where you can find out more down below in the description box of this video. And I would love, love, love to get to know more about you and your work and have you join this innermost art community of mine.
All right, you guys, that is going to do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.